you like movies? Do you like hearing random people talk about movies? Well, then you've come to the right place. This is Movie Emporium, a podcast where we talk to you about our thoughts about the world of movies and give you our opinions on the past, present, and future of the film industry itself. Today with me are the Ant-Man. Rob, how you doing? Hello. How was your week? Um, it was a little weakish. A little weakish? Yeah. You didn't do anything exciting or fun or did you kill anybody or... Um, I... Not gonna answer that in case it may incriminate me. Oh, okay. You see any good movies outside of Ant Man? Oh, outside good movies outside of Ant Man. Uh, oh wait, no, hold on to that. <laughs> and with me are I don't know if he wants to be called the Wasp because the Wasp is a woman in the movie. Is Adam? How you doing, Adam? I don't know why he said not Adam Ant for Ant Man because Adam Ant. I mean, gosh, clear miss right there. I'm doing okay. I know, right? <laughs> Not very uh, well steeped in uh, trying to make jokes, I guess. So, that always your week was good. It was okay. It's a week. A week, week of golfing and all that good stuff. Somewhat, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you don't know our podcast, we talk about movies. If you like our podcast, uh, go ahead and subscribe, rate, all that good stuff. iTunes, iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, all that good stuff. Subscribe. Give us money. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. Yes. Give Wait, a, we have a like button? No. I think so. Oh, no? Oh. I don't know. We should look into that. I know. Smash it if you do. Yeah, no, today's pretty much going to be a very heavy-centric Marvel day. Um, a lot of Marvel stuff going on. We, uh, we'll we get into Ant-Man. We'll get into Steve Ditko, who passed away. We'll uh, attempt to rank the uh, Marvel movies, and then might have a question if I'm able to find it. Send us an actual question, so... <gasps> yes. I guess the first news story I'll get into is uh, Incredibles. It will be the first animated movie to cross $500 million at the box office. Be now Finding Dory, which out came out last year, which was for four eighty six. Mm. So, what do you guys think about that? Uh, yeah, I, I'm <laughs> not speechless, but it's kind of like I'm shocked that people don't think it would have done this good. I think it was a great movie. I have it ranked higher than the uh, first one. I mm-hmm. love the first one. Overall, it was just a great movie. Uh, one of our last podcasts, we talked about it. Uh, overall, it was just a great movie from beginning to end. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of surprising because it's making more money than Jurassic World, which a lot of people predicted would be like outside of Avengers, the biggest movie of the summer. So, I'm actually kind of surprised that no animated movie has gotten over five hundred million yet. Is that just yeah. domestic, or is that no? So yeah, it's just domestic. Um, it's done like eight hundred worldwide. Yeah, it's it's surprising. I did. I, I would have figured that even like uh, you know the other Disney movies like Frozen, as big as that was, would have mm. gotten over five hundred million. But well, Frozen got its a uh, lot of it in uh, DVD, Blu-ray, uh, yeah. and streaming. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Frozen would make it made over a billion dollars, so it made more money than uh, Incredibles worldwide. But yeah, it's. I think you're right. I think it's been like the DVD sales and all that stuff have made a lot of money for it, but. Mm. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's cool because you know everybody's been waiting for Incredibles for like fourteen years now, so it's nice to see that makes money. Yeah. It's nice to see, you know, it's a good movie too. So that means we'll definitely get a sequel in fifteen years. Yeah, <laughs> when Craig T. All Nelson, right. Say when Craig T. Nelson's like eighteen, uh, eighty years old or something like that. Yeah. Well, we pitched uh, the third movie to finish the trilogy on our last podcast, the podcast before that. So if you want to hear our idea for the third Incredibles, go back and listen to that podcast. Exactly, exactly. You know who's not going to be 80 years old creating the third movie is uh, Keanu Reeves. Because he'll be dead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he's going to be dead. <laughs> yeah, but, but he announced, he announced uh, the new John Wick title, which is Parabellum. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea what that means at all. Do you guys have any idea what that means? Uh, it's a Parabells. Parabells, is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know. Off the top of my head, I would say it's a type of semi-automatic pistol or machine gun. Uh, I think the, the the straight definition. I think you're right, Rob. It's a type of semi-automatic pistol or machine gun. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of drawing from my days and um, when I was in school, you know. Well, we I, I know from the, uh, the working with a lot of tourists and talking to a lot of South Americans and Central Americans that it actually is also Latin for prepare for war. Ah. Uh, it's a frame from the CVM Perum, Bellabium, meaning if you want peace, prepare for war. Ah, which makes sense that was, because... <laughs> that's John some uh, hardcore uh, throwdown of knowledge, you know? Yes, I use that a lot at GameStop. <laughs> used a lot of GameStop. <laughs> 
Oh man, but um, yeah, no, it's nothing like too too major, but it's. Uh... I know I'll definitely be there to watch it because I love both the uh, both John Wicks that came out, just mm. like super awesome action. Well, you know the thing is, I mean, Keanu Reeves has been on. You know, he, he's from everything you read, he's a he's a great person overall. He, you know, he takes public transportation, he helps people out when he can. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, with John Wick, you know, his past couple movies have been good. But with John Wick, I'm now excited. What's next for him? Because John Wick three, from what I understand, will be the last one. But what's next for him? Are they going to open up the John Wick universe? Uh, to where is, is he still, you know, what goes on in the third one? You know, is he going to pop up there? I, or is it going to be some crossovers? Or is he going to do a whole new IP? I know he's doing Bill and Ted 3. Actually, I found out the story. It's going to be, he uh, he goes to the Circle K. He pops out of the Circle K and a, a phone booth pops down. And John Wick gets out. He's like, we need you to go back and save my dog. And then <laughs> he goes back in time, saves his dog. <laughs> And then he has to go back and save Alex Jones from making freaks. Huh. So, then, uh, then not Alex Jones, but uh, Alex Winter. Somebody killed my dog. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. And then they go back and uh, save Hollywood from its uh, demise of scandals. Don't make The Matrix 3. <laughs> you can make The Matrix 3, just make it better. Make The exactly. Matrix 3 good. <laughs> Will we ever see Neo again? Yes, in John Wick. (laughs) (laughs) So what if John Wick ends up being the Matrix? Hmm. Uh, My brain is just like exploded right now. You just like, you've killed me. I don't know what to do. My life is over. That's why he's he's so good at weapons. Yeah. Lost my show notes. Son of a bitch. There we go. (laughs) Son of a bitch. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, so hopefully, uh, I'm assuming... um, the fuck john wick is gonna be a pretty good movie the last two have been so but uh speaking of like crazy hopefully good uh did you hear about nicholas cage is gonna be in spider-man into the universe or spider-verse mm-hmm. i was actually really excited about this one at first uh mm-hmm. but now that they've confirmed uh noir i love that spider-man uh for people who don't know about uh this spider-man he's essentially dressed in all black and he's from the great depression era is that uh, the one nicholas cage is playing yeah huh so he's a lot more detective-y, uh, but also a lot more violent. How many how many Spider Mans are going to be in this movie? Eight hundred well, seventy two. Yeah, there's a lot of different Spider uh, Spider Men. Uh, even more if you include like other alterations like Mary Jane and Spider mm-hmm. Gwen and you know his daughter and a bunch of different you know. But right now, I think they've confirmed four or five. Okay, um, I know Miles Morales is the main Spider Man in the movie, right? Yes. Okay, and then Peter Parker is going to be like his backup or his like teacher or something like that. Yeah, he's going to be. Uh, from what I understand, he's going to be teaching Miles. Okay. I uh, think Spider Gwen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now uh, Spider Man Noir. Is there a Spider Man that you guys want to see in the movie that you think would be cool? I would love to see twenty ninety nine, but I doubt we're going to see that. I want to see the Indian Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I've seen that YouTube video. That's good stuff. Or the Italian Spider-Man when he opens the door and he's like, no. Nah. <laughs> it's an old... Just good old, uh, see, uh, Japanese Spider-Man. Yeah. But, um, it should be an interesting movie. Just the fact they're putting all the Spider-Mans in there will be, uh, will be kind of cool. And Nicolas Cage, you know, there's a lot of people who want the, um, the Superman that he was doing with Tim Burton to become uh, like an animated movie. That'd be cool. Yeah, so... They're actually talking about that, or people want it? No, that's what people want. Oh. Uh, the guy who directed the uh, documentary is talking about, they've been, he's been hearing possible rumors of maybe something like that happening. Yeah, because that guy works on, like, Metal Apocalypse yeah, or whatever. Metal Apocalypse. Michael, yeah, Michael. Michael, Michael what? Michael Jockalypse. Michael, J- Michael, J- Michael, J- Michael Jackson's lips. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he actually is on Collider a lot, so he's been talking about that. But um, yeah, I guess I guess, I guess the main story. The speaking of Spider Man, the main story of the week is, and you can help me out with this, Adam. And I don't know how much you know about Steve Dicko, Rob, but uh, he passed away a few days ago. Yeah, 
And uh, can you kind of, Adam or Rob, can you, because I'm not really well versed in comic book lore, but can you give an idea of like how important Steve Ditko was for Spider-Man and Marvel and all that good stuff? Well, he was the co-creator of Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, uh, and a couple other uh, big uh, comic book heroes mm-hmm. uh, from our generation that we grew up. It's, I mean, it's kind of, yeah, I mean, I still have uh I had wow. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I had Stan Lee sign one of the uh, comics that him mm-hmm. and uh, that him and Ditka did uh, of Spider Man. It was an oversized uh, one, right. so uh, it's not like the actual real comic. It's just an oversized cover of it. But it was it was really cool. You know, this guy had a lot of uh, uh, heavy handed. So he, he just did a lot for Spider Man, Doctor mm-hmm. Strange. Uh, I think he also ha- uh, created the question. If I'm not wrong, if you guys know who the question is. No, not offhand. So, you know, uh, uh, Warshack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just think, like, super intelligent Warshack. That, oh, okay. That's the easiest way I can uh, describe him. Mm-hmm. Except he doesn't have a face. Oh, okay, yeah. Does he have, like, a question face? Like, a question mark of the face or something like that? Uh, it's like... usually No, it's usually just a blank face. He's usually wearing, like, a suit with, like, a tie and a trench coat and a fede- uh, fedora. Okay. Um, yeah, no, he, I know from what I've read about him, he was wildly influential in the comic book world in general, you know, like you said with Spider-Man, but it's, uh, it's kind of crazy to see someone like that pass away. Cause you know, you have Stan Lee, who's like 95 years old. You have Steve Ditko was 90 and it's just, I don't know. It's crazy because these people were, you know, people we look up to when, uh, if you're out there, just if you're listening and you're like, oh, I've never read any of his comics, I guarantee mm-hmm. you, you have seen something that he's written. Uh, he was actually a co-writer of the first and second Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire, just FYI. Oh, so he actually, so the uh, Sam Raimi movies he helped work on? Yep. I think oh. he also did one of the Amazings, but I can't remember which one it was. Okay. Do you have like any comics that you really enjoyed the what he worked on? Anything like any arcs or anything like that? Uh, not not in particular. Uh, but I mean, you know, bringing Vulture in, and I mean, you didn't create the Vulture, but you know, uh, just different story arcs, and you know, doing a lot of the penciling and stuff like that, but mostly writing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there wasn't one that I could just lock down. But, I mean, yeah, Stan Lee gets, like, all the credit for Spider-Man, and a lot of these people get forgotten that, you know, they helped out or had at least a part in creating these. Right. And it's sad, it's, you know, a lot of people won't find out until after they're gone, kind of like Kirby. Yeah. Um, I know, like, Doctor Strange is one of those second-tier comic characters like Iron Man that's gotten popular just because of the MCU. But, yeah, it's like, for instance, he uh, he's won a bunch of, like you said, he created Spider-Man. He's won a bunch of like uh, prestigious awards, like the Inkwell Award. He wore the J- he won the Jack Kirby Hall of Fame Award in 1990, and the Will Eisner Award in '94. See, he did a lot of stuff with Fantastic Four. He did some. Uh, he actually did a couple of issues of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Hmm. So, but Rob, did you have anything on it? I know we've been talking, but uh, I'm not really too familiar with him. I mean. I mm-hmm. grew up mostly kind of more into the movie side, and I, I didn't get into a lot of reading comics till I was a little older, and I just mm. never paid attention as much to, like, the the writers until, I mean, probably even more recently, really, so I'd have to, like, look up and actually see w- which ones he did. I have always, like, my favorite, I've always been more DC, but my favorite mm-hmm. uh, Marvel character has always been Spider-Man, so... Uh, right. So it's kind of cool. Right. I never and I never even heard of him really. So that kind of goes to show you that, you know, I always mm-hmm. assumed that it was uh, Stan Lee that invented Spider-Man because it kind of he always kind of gets the credit. So it was kind of actual a uh, bit of shocking news today. Yeah. Um. And I know Adam Steve Ditko worked on some DC stuff, right? Uh, I'm not. I'm not big on DC. I think he might have dabbled. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, but I couldn't tell you like what characters he created or something like that. Yeah, it says he worked on Blue Beetle for DC. Oh, that's Cap- cool. Yeah, Captain Adam. Does it say which Blue Beetle? Is it the Jaime? Uh, Theodore Stephen Ted Cord. Okay. Yeah, so I'm guessing he's like one of the more popular Blue Beetles, maybe. He's one of the first. He's the first. 
Um, like, here's a question I have for you guys, and you know, maybe you can. Why is it that okay? So you have Jack Kirby, you have Steve Ditko. These guys are probably more influential in the comic book world. I mean, not this, not to discredit uh, Stan Lee because he's very influential, but. Why do you feel that Stan Lee gets more credit than these guys? What is it about Stan Lee that... Well, it... Ditka actually declines interviews and public appearances. So, like, how Stan Lee goes out and meets his mm-hmm. fans, uh, uh, Ditko wasn't. Okay. He was actually, you know, he's more private and mm-hmm. other things like that. He wanted to keep to himself, from what I remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there was one con a while back ago that he was... Uh, someone said he was going to go to, but then it was kind of like, no, he never said, you know, everyone was shot because he like never goes to cons or anything. But I think Lee gets a, a lot of the credit just because he's out there. He's always talking it up. And then a lot of it goes to, if you look at a lot of the old comics, uh, mm-hmm. well, I shouldn't say a lot because I don't have a lot of them anymore. But if I right. remember, uh, Stan Lee's name was a first, a lot of the times. Mm. And usually when your name is first, you know, no one bothers to look at the second. Yeah, that's weird how that works, isn't it? Because there's, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm gonna be the first person to admit that I don't know a lot about comics, but you know, when you start actually getting into stuff like, you know, for instance, Alan Moore, who's known for writing a lot of comics, but you don't ever get into like the artist and all that stuff, and it's kind of interesting to see because, um, like I said, Stan Lee, as influential as he was, you know, he had people underneath him that were probably were more important in getting those comics created. I'm sure Steve Ditko had. I guess, I guess I'm thinking that maybe Steve Ditko is kind of like the Steve Wozniak and mm-hmm. Stan Lee is kind of like the, um, what's his face, uh, Steve, Steve Jobs. Jobs. Yeah, so. yeah, I think it's like oh. what Adam said. It's it's all personality because mm-hmm. even if I go to uh, Google, I go to Steve Ditko and I go to images, there are no images of him mm-hmm. where he's older than what looks like, I don't know, 40s or so. They're all old, black and white. Yeah. You know, there's there's no new updated pictures which says that he probably didn't go out he probably didn't you know publicize that he was you know the creator of spider-man and all this uh, whereas mm. stan lee is always in front of the camera and it, he's like the showman really so i think that's probably what leads to it it's kind of like the uh it's not exactly the same but in the same sense of uh a lot of people think that tim burton directed the nightmare before christmas Right, right. Because it, you know, it has his style and his name on it, but really, mm-hmm. he didn't. If you look into uh, the credits and all that, but he's kind of associated with it because he's like the the personality that you think of. I think it's probably the, kind of the same thing with Stanley. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Uh, a lot of things. I mean, you think of Stanley, you think of all these uh, all these characters that he created, and he don't get me wrong, he definitely had a hand in a lot of these. But, I mean, who, who uh, you have Iron Man and Cap mm-hmm. are driving the Marvel Universe right now. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so, do you think Stan Lee created both of them, one of them, neither of them? I, I, I don't know. I, like I said, I'm not, I want to say yes. And, like, Park, you know, Park created, I think he created what, with Jack Kirby. Uh, I don't, am I right on that? I, For which I, one? Uh, did he create either? Like, did Jack Kirby create both of them, or was it Stan Lee? So Stan Lee did not create Captain America at all. Okay. Um, that was uh, that was Kirby and Simon. Uh, as for Iron Man, yeah, uh, Stan Lee definitely had a part in creating him with Kirby, but also Heck and Liber, uh, Lieber, sorry, uh-huh. uh, also created him. So I mean, more you know, it was more. You know, from what I understand, Lee's idea, but then there was four, uh, essentially four people in creating the Iron Man that we know. Mm-hmm. But Lee didn't create Captain America. That was Kirby and Simon. But because of Stan Lee, they give him more credit than they should have, basically. Well, if, if I remember correctly, he was an artist mm-hmm. uh, on Captain America, and that's where he started. So he gets credit for that because uh, I think Captain America might have been like getting canceled or something going on without that. I'm sorry, I'm not 100 percent on no, that. No, you're fine. But I do know Stan Lee came in with Captain America uh-huh. and essentially uh, co-piloted it with Jack Kirby. Huh. Interesting. I would have never known that because you know, like you like you said, you know, with the way Marvel is today, it almost seems like Stan Lee created everything. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of like um, you know. I don't know who the, who the big DC people were. Um, I know Jack, didn't Jack Kirby, he created Darkseid, right? Yeah. 
uh, Jack Kirby works. created like majority of everything. Right, right. Like the modern day uh, DC characters and Marvel characters. Oh, even back in the day. Okay. I mean, there's a like. Oh my gosh! If you just Google Jack Kirby and who he's created, mm. a good chunk of that list from Marvel and DC is going to be Kirby. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I uh, shows you how much I know about comic books. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting when you actually go in and do some actual research on these people because, you know, like I said, we can talk about how influential Stan Lee is, but when you start reading about, like, how influential, like, Steve Ditko and, you know, Jack Kirby and all of them were, uh, it makes you appreciate more those people more than you do the people that are well-faced. Like, I could create, I could appreciate Steve Jobs all day, but, you know, Steve Wozniak, I think, is more of the centerpiece for the Apple of today, I guess, but... Um, yeah, so, you know, rest in peace, Steve Ditko. So, one more piece of news before we'll move on to the actual topic is Captain Marvel. Probably not as well known right now, but probably will be come March when everybody sees the movie. Uh, they finally finished wrapping on the film, which is cool. So, it's all done. Um, I think they're going to start working on, like, the visual effects and all that good stuff. Uh, I haven't gotten your guys' opinion. What do you, how do you feel? Do you, are you excited for this movie at all? I'm excited. I don't, I have, like no knowledge of captain marvel i've never read mm. any miss marvel or captain marvel or anything else uh mm. now i've read the dc captain marvel but never <laughs> but never this one uh so I'm kind legally of, you're not allowed to call him that anymore uh, shazam shazam I, uh, shazam so it's just another one of those movies where i kind of am going to be going in with no you know previous history on the character which uh, I guess it's good and bad in certain ways, but uh, mm. it, it makes sometimes it makes the movie a little more exciting for me when I don't do any like back backstory research. Yeah, what about you, Adam? Uh, I'm just excited because if they go by what she actually like is and how she gets her powers, it's going to open up so much more to this universe, and it's going to open up essentially all of Phase Four. It and. Also, I'm excited to see Rogue get her powers mm-hmm. uh, and the Fantastic Four to come in. No, I'm just, uh, <laughs> but if anybody didn't get that, that's how Rogue got her powers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she actually she's stolen from Miss Mar or Captain Marvel. I'm sorry, she starts out Miss Marvel and then becomes mm-hmm. Captain Marvel. Um, but I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I, I know uh, more about her background and everything that goes on with her. I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about what it means. Uh, and especially if they kind of stick to the lore, all the, essentially, the storylines that they can write from here on out. Right, right. What's uh, How do you think it's going to play out? Like, what's your what's your feeling on, whether well, you have any idea, like, kind of what storyline they may use or anything like that, just to kind of theorize? Well, my thing is, it, it, they're kind of like how we talked about uh, Bumblebee. This could be kind of the reason why Shield was put together, mm-hmm. um, but I mean, a little a little background. I mean, not no spoilers or anything, but uh, essentially, she's a ex Air Force pilot. She worked mm-hmm. for NASA. She ended up gaining her powers while at NASA through something happening with somebody else there who had powers, which leads into other things and kind of a big gigantic fight. Right, which will open up so much more into the Marvel universe, and I mean we've already, they've already kind of talked about mm-hmm. uh, the Kree, right? So, but how big can this like fight be if it's taking place in the '90s and really nobody knows about it? So, that's my thing. Yeah, and um, I, f- I think we found out that like this week that. Uh... They're going to use, like, de-aging technology like they did in Ant-Man on uh, Samuel L. Jackson and um, Clark Gregg, who plays Coulson. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see what those characters look like. But, um, Maybe he'll have yeah, hair. I'm interested to see it. What's up? Maybe he'll have hair. <laughs> I th- oh, they did give Samuel L. Jackson hair at the end of uh, Infinity War. Oh, did they? I think he did. I think he had, like, uh, hair. No, I thought he was bald. Because it's still the same. I don't know. I have to go back and watch it now. Do you think when he's talking to Carol Danvers, he's like, does Marcellus Wallace look like a bitch? <laughs> yeah, actually, no, there was a, there's a, um, one other story that I forgot about. Uh, I don't know if we talked about it on the last episode, but um, the possible title of Avengers is going to be called Endgame. So it's going to be called Avengers Endgame, and I don't know 
if you guys think that's a good title, if that ends up being the title, or what you guys feel about that. Well, it'll be the end game with them fighting. Essentially, you know, what Strange said, hey, there's only, what what was there, how many scenarios did he run through? 14 million or something like that. And only one that was successful. So I definitely think we're following the, well, of course, we're following the path of that one. Mm -hmm. But I honestly think from, uh, you know, some just knowing whose contracts are up and what other people are saying and people not being renewed in their contract. Right. uh, you can definitely see that they're moving forward. And I do think it's going to be an end of an era. And uh, a lot of people were upset with certain people dying infinity war. And I think some people are going to get upset because I think other people are going to die. And maybe some people are going to stay dead. I saw an interview uh, or I read an interview the other day with the directors and it was kind of an obvious thing, but they just kind of confirmed what seemed obvious uh, where they said it was, on purpose that it's the original Avengers that survived because it's it's sort of them moving into this final movie with the the group that actually started the journey. Yeah, um, I think Robert. I can't remember. There's an artist that works for Marvel. I can't remember who his name was, but he's like, it's called Endgame because it's the end for Robert Downey Jr. I'm like, really? You think the end for Robert Downey Jr.? Of course. I mean, you really honestly think the guy's gonna come back after this movie? Well, he has he has said that he would do like cameos, kind of like how not as much as Homecoming, mm. but little things here and there. He said he would do, but yeah, he pretty much said that he's done as Iron Man. Although he did say he would come back for Iron Man four if the fans asked him to, but that was before Infinity War. Right. Nobody asked him. <laughs> <laughs> Move on, damn it. Yeah, like I said, it's it's if that's the title of the movie, it's gonna be it's pretty logical because. It's the end of an era, but um, yeah, so actually I have a question if you guys are interested. Nah. So the question is... Nah. No? Well, I'm going to ask it anyways. <laughs> yes, question, question, you have a question? Come on, I swear, just hang in there one second. Please, God, give me the answer! I'm going to have to ask you a question. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? It's the question that drives us. Where do you live? The city. Do you have a house? Apartment. Or a rent? Rent. What do you do for a living? Lots of things. Where's your office? I don't have one. It's the question that brought you here. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? You know the question, just as I did. Who is my daddy? What does he do? That is correct. So, the movie Emporium is going to have questions. Um, If you guys want to actually ask a question... Uh, send it to my email, which I, is nlapola1138 at gmail.com. And I'm only using it now until I actually set up an actual email for this podcast. But it's nlapolla1138 at gmail.com. The answer to your question is yes, I did see the Baywatch movie. Excellent. And did you love it? No, it was absolutely horrible. Oh, man, come on. I thought you saw it like six times. I did see it six times. I thought it would change. Kind of like when I saw Titanic. I was just hoping... <laughs> That he would realize there was enough room on that door for him. And, we're, we're, and was there any room? Oh, every time. Every but he time. still dies. Exactly. Every time he inches a little bit closer to that door. But um, so the question is, and this is going off more. This is a, not a Marvel question. Is I just lost the question. Uh, what is your favorite video game to movie adaptation and least favorite? Hmm. Also, and what would you like to see made into a film, like video game wise? Hmm. My favorite video game to movie adaptation that's a tough one i know what yours is rob it's dead or alive oh my god what was the louis (laughs) bowl movie i can't remember what that was the vampire chick oh blood rain (laughs) blood rain worst (laughs) video Uh, game (laughs) i would probably say that anything uvi bull did it would be ranked as the worst it it doesn't really matter it's just a big pile of shit right at the bottom or or poop sorry what you mean you didn't like far cry or alone in the dark or alone in the dark and uh, i saw that in the theater alone in the dark that was my first ubi bull experience why would you do (laughs) why would you do that to yourself i didn't know what it was i was just like hey it looks all right and then i went and i watched it and i was like hmm you know you just wanted to see it for tara reed before uh, cosmetic surgery yeah i would have to say probably Oh, go ahead. House of the Dead, I would say, is probably worse than Blood Rain, though. Which was an Ovi Bowl movie. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Isn't it at the end where they like, they switch the weapons and they do, like, uh, the 360 views of everybody switching weapons? 
Yeah, I think so. And they even have like the cartoon zombies popping up, if I remember. Yeah, they do like video game flips and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely a horrible movie. I would say best is probably up there is Mortal Kombat, the original one. Yeah. I'm not like the biggest fan of that movie, but you know, for a video game adaptation, it works until you watch the second one, Annihilation. Uh, Silent Hill was pretty good. Uh, uh, Silent Hill was pretty good, and so was Resident Evil. Silent Hill was good. Yeah, the first Resident Evil. Um, I know a lot of people hate it. I actually still like the Super Mario Brothers movie. Super Mario, 1993. I want a sequel to that movie where, you know, remember how Peach uh, pops in at the end? She's like, you'll never believe this. Yeah. It's too bad Bob Hoskins is not alive anymore. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think the latest, uh, uh, I, I kind of like the latest Tomb Raider movie. I liked it too. I thought it got a bad rap. Yeah, I would say I thought, it's the I best. thought she was good in it, but I thought it was all right. I'll tell you. So you actually, this is a movie that's not really based off a video game, but it's a video game movie. Have you ever guys ever seen Existence? No. With the it's a David Cronenberg movie. It's a uh, it has Jude Law and um, oh, what's it? Uh, Alicia Silverstone. Um, shit, what's her name? The negative. One one. <laughs> negative Ghost Rider. You ever seen uh, Leaving Las Vegas? Yes. Who who's the who's the lady in that movie? The uh, one. I supposed to see, you have to be a little bit more. Uh... Oh my god! What's her name? Uh, Elizabeth Shue as Elizabeth Shue and Jude Law, and it's a story about like these these um, this creator who's created this video game that's like organic and attaches to you, and they have people like trying to trying to take it away from her to and kill her to you know create the their own style of video game. And it's like a really dirt, like dark and disturbing movie. You mean adventures and babysitting? Yes. Like adventures and babysitting, you know, with, uh, the playboy Thor and, uh, I have a, and, uh, uh, I have a recommendation. If anybody wants to watch a really bad video game movie, that's that almost crosses the line to so bad. It's good. What's that? And that is street fighter. The legend of Chun Li. Oh my god! Isn't that a what's her face from uh, Smallville? Smallville, yeah. It has probably one of my all-time favorite cinematic dialogue readings in history, <laughs> and where uh, what's the name of the villain? He, he's like doing his old monologue, and he says, "Even milk has an expiration date." Oh god! <laughs> oh Is, god. Isn't that Bison? Bison's the yeah, villain in that Bison. one. Bison. He's like, "Even milk has an expiration date." And he's talking oh, about Jesus. like his dad or her dad or something. I was like, "Of course it has an expiration date." It's like if there's <laughs> anything ever that you think of that has an expiration date, it is milk. That's like the least <laughs> surprising. Or if we're going so bad, it might be good. Double Dragon. Double Dragon's yeah. amazing. I, it's so bad, it's good though. Exactly. Robert Patrick is the bad guy in that movie. <laughs> um, did you guys? Oh, was it? Uh... I just forgot what I was going to say. Oh, wasn't... Yeah, I know what I was going to say. Was Chris Klein in The Legend of Chuntley? Wasn't he like a teacher or some shit in that movie? Chris Klein? Yeah, the one from American Pie. Oh, yeah, he was in that movie. Yeah. Isn't he like the love interest of her or something? I don't know. Rob probably knows the movie better than I do. Or we do. Uh, let's see. Street Fighter Legend <laughs> of chun <laughs> I'm actually I'm getting out my uh, special edition Criterion Blu-ray so I can look at the back. Uh, <laughs> Didn't they make? Yeah, they made a Ratchet and Clank movie. That was pretty good. Chris Klein. Um, he was he was good old Charlie Nash. Charlie Nash. Oh God. You know the original Street Fighter was pretty good. I mean, good bad in a way. <laughs> John Claude Van Damme. Don't get Van Damme. Raul Julia's <laughs> like he's dying through the movie. <laughs> yeah, his last movie. He just. Like I think like three weeks after the movie was uh, filmed, he like died or some shit. Yeah. Actually, you know what's a really good movie that's not a uh, actual based off a movie or a video game is Wreck It Ralph. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. You know, and, Doom uh, would have been a lot better if they shot the entire thing in first person. Remember the end? Yeah. Uh, Trying. I'm like that. That's another franchise I love so much is Doom, and oh my god, that movie was so terrible. When I went to watch Doom, uh, there was a guy that was sitting a couple rows in front of me. And when it went to the first person, he stood up in the theater, and he goes, "It's the effing game." <laughs> and that's how Rob and I met. And that was why. <laughs> <I knew> <laughs> <him>. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. The Angry Birds movie wasn't bad for an animated, like, you know, family movie. 
Yeah, it was not bad. Um, I think, like you said earlier, my favorite is probably Silent Hill. Yeah, Silent I, Hill's I think... definitely up there. Then they ruined it with the second one. Yeah, we don't talk about the second one. Fucking Kit from Game of Thrones is in that movie. Ugh. Or uh, Jon Snow, I should say. Kit's his real name. But uh, is there like, is there any other ones that you guys enjoy at all? Because video game movies are usually pretty terrible. Like, there's like probably three movies that are actually good. I, I, uh, ne- I never saw Rampage. I was looking at this list and I saw, I forgot all about that already. Uh, oh vi- yeah. I visually, I loved Final Fantasy Spirits with him. Did you like uh, Advent Children? Yes, love Advent Children. Uh, I mean, The Wizard with Fred oh, Savage. Oh yeah, Fuck, I, I mean, it, was, the wizard. it wasn't an adaptation from a video game, but I mean, it was the first time we ever saw Super Mario Brothers three. I love the power <laughs> glove. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> California. Oh my god. And then Pixels, the greatest video game movie of all time. Yes. So good that even Adam Sandler could walk into the White House unabated. Yep. Actually, I actually enjoy uh, Peter Dinklage in that movie. (laughs) For as bad as it is. It's a win win. Either get Serena Williams or I get a panini sandwich. So I got a a friend who. he met the guy, he sent me a picture the other day, and he met the guy that Peter Dinklage's character was based on, who's like the all-time Pac-Man record score or something. Oh, yeah? And, That's not the guy from King of Kong, is it? Uh, no, I don't think so. Like, I, I, whoever he is, he's like, so my friend is like 6'4", and this guy was taller mm-hmm. than him. And Jesus. He was, and he was like, this is the guy that uh, they based Peter Dinklage. Is your friend Johnny Nitro? <laughs> Johnny Nitro. <laughs> no. But I do have. I think he's on my Facebook. I let him borrow uh, Johnny Nitro, the wrestler. I let him borrow um, Equilibrium. Oh, that's a good movie. And uh, I freaking love that movie. He came out during a show up in OVW, and he was like, he saw me sitting there. He goes, Equilibrium is effing over. I was like, yeah. Now give me my DVD back. <laughs> <laughs> um. Actually, I've been looking through the list of... There's a whole bunch of uh, video game movies, but you want to know the highest rated video game movie? Ooh. Uh, no. According to whom? According to Wikipedia. You know, the most reliable source on the internet. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say it is Tomb Raider, Laura Croft, 2001, Angelina Jolie. It's close, but it is not. It's oh. actually one Rob's already mentioned. Uh, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time? Uh, no. Is it Rampage? <laughs> It is Rampage at 52%. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at Rotten Tomatoes. What? They, they got that at 52 um, But a couple other, like the bigger movies, like you said, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Crap, um, Warcraft. Now, see, I thought Warcraft was a lot better than it got credit for. Mm-hmm. But it's I, don't get me wrong, I'm not like, holy crap, that was an amazing movie. But I still want to see the sequel. Yeah, I mean, it did like 433. It's actually the highest grossing movie for video games, like 433 million worldwide. That was all overseas, but I'm sure they'll get a sequel at some point. But um, let's see. Resident Evil, Resident Evil. Ass Creed, uh, which was terrible. Pokemon the movie, I Choose You, is 43%. Actually, what else was there? There's a Five Nights at Freddy's movie coming. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Uh, Need for Speed wasn't too bad for what it was. It was... You know, if you like car chases. Um, Let's see what Uwe Bull's doing. Oh, God. Oh, in the name of the king, a dungeon siege tale. He's that is, uh, was a tr- transporter, Jason Statham, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, Hellboy. He's not currently doing anything. He's producing something. Yeah, he's too busy boxing people. Actually, going on to the other part of that question, what is a uh, movie that you guys want to see made? Is there anything you have interest in? You mean new IP, uh, remake, or video game? Uh, just something. It, 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 yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, is there something you want to see them? Because re- they were going to talk about doing like Mortal Kombat for a while, and then they kind of just did a YouTube series on that one. I was going to say Mortal Kombat, and I forgot all about that series, which is pretty good, actually. I would love to. Re- I mean, I, they wouldn't be able to do it. I would love to see a live action Legend of Zelda movie. Everybody would be upset with that. Well, there was talk of a, a Netflix series for Legend of Zelda, wasn't there? Well, see, a series is different. But you got, you know, if you get like a two-hour movie, you know, you have to tell the entire storyline. Or if you're going to do like just one, you know, essentially 
you're going to do new storyline, you're going to do the like, game storyline, are mm-hmm. you going to tell the entire, like, one game in a two-hour movie, or is it going to be multiple movies for that one game? Where do you start in that? So... I'd like to see a uh, Metal Gear Solid movie. Actually, that is happening. That is happening yeah. with um, the guy from that directed Godzilla. Or not Godzilla, King Kong. The uh, Kong Skull Island movie. Yeah, see, the movies, video game movies that I would like to see are all for Nintendo. Like, I would love to see a remake of Super Mario Brothers. I would love to see a Legend of Zelda live action. And I would love to see a freaking uh, Metroid live action. Oh, that'd be cool. I met- that would actually be... Metroid would be really cool, yeah. What was it? The, I know the writer of Doctor Strange was talking about doing a Deus Ex Human Revolution movie. Mm. Uh, of course, De- uh, Scott Derrickson would be involved in that. But um, actually, speaking of video games, what do you guys think about Jim Carrey as Doctor Robotnik? That was pretty funny. I guess it's just an animated movie. No, it's a it's a uh, like a uh, Chipmunks or fucking Marmaduke where <laughs> oh. you know, Sonic's uh, really? uh, animated. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's Maybe pretty bad, not... but. Uh... I'll probably still see it, because I get free tickets now, so. Yeah, that's, oh, actually, I was going to ask you, how do you guys enjoy the A-list thing so far? I have yet to have a problem with it, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. I had one issue, but I think it was, uh, I think they were just having issues with their app, and, like, I went to go buy a ticket, and it it wasn't showing up as free, and so oh, okay. I actually had to pay for it, but I went and I, I got on, uh, on the old Twitter, mm-hmm. and I tweeted their customer service and they gave me a refund so nice uh, i guess nice. they it's just i think there was just some kind of weird glitch but other than that it's been working pretty well and it resets every friday fyi yes and amc please put the tickets or disney springs amc please put the tickets for mission impossible up please i want to get my ticket for that yeah disney springs they need i mean i'm not saying that they need to like fire anybody but they need to get somebody in there that uh knows when tickets are going on sale right right exactly yeah. so because it's yeah so it's like, what's that they're like the only theater in the country that doesn't put them on sale when everybody else does exactly well to be fair mission impossible does have the real d 3d showing listed but every poster they have has it listed as a dolby movie so i think we're saying make sure you're putting your dolby digital tickets up on sale yeah exactly just do something because I want my Mission Impossible tickets. But if you're talking about That's that, I want. I want them to also put up the freaking Teen Titans Go movie tickets. Is that next week or is that? It's the same day as uh, Mission Impossible, the 27th. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, man. So I'm definitely going to be using two of my three movies that week. Yeah, I'm like, I, I keep telling the uh, the Twitter account on uh, AMC, I'm like, I want to give you guys my money. Just take my fucking money. Yeah. Oh man, but so anyways, yeah. <laughs> so. Thank, oh. thank you, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, I really appreciate it. Hopefully, you got some we got some mileage out of it. But uh, kind of wrapping it back to the beginning with me saying Teen Titans, and you speaking up Sp- Superman. Nicholas oh, Cage yeah. is playing Superman in that movie. In the Teen Titans movie? Mm-hmm. Yep, he's the voice really? of Superman. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. He Fucking Nicholas Cage making play. money. Yeah, so now he's Ghost Rider, uh, Spider Man Noir, and Superman. Yeah. Man, I still want to see what that Tim Burton Superman would have been like. Shit was a bit crazy. Never but, see it. Yeah. All right. So um, now we'll get into the actual topic about an hour into our podcast. But um, uh, you guys may have done this quiz before, but it's a really cool thing where you rank all the. We're gonna do. We're gonna put the Ant Man the Wasp after we get done reviewing it into our rankings. But I figure we kind of like as a group discuss. Um, the Marvel MCU by itself in general, just say like, for instance, uh, the app that I'm going to use, it's going to put two movies, put them together and we decide which one's better. And by the end of all the movies ranking, we'll have a, like a definitive list of, it won't be everybody's what they believe is the best movies, but we'll kind of have like an agreement type of thing. Well, I actually listed out my top 20. Me too. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah me too. You want? Do you want? Do you guys want to do your top twenty, or do you want to do this thing? We can do that, but Rob, you want to do like top five real quick, Rob? Yeah, actually, yeah, we'll do that. Go ahead and just name your top five. Me? Or the yeah, other? go ahead. Okay. Uh, so my number five is Infinity War. Uh, my number five is Iron Man, the original. Okay. Uh, my number four is Guardians of the Galaxy One. Uh, my number four is Doctor Strange. 
My number three is Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, my number three is Thor Ragnarok. My number two is Doctor Strange. My number two is Guardians of the Galaxy 2. My number one is Guardians of the Galaxy 2. My number one is Avengers Infinity War. Interesting. Hmm. My number one is Captain America uh, Winter Soldier. Nobody asked you. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually number well, 11 on my list. Oh, yeah? That yeah. is number seven. Oh, wait. Which one did you say? Winter Soldier. Oh, Winter, Winter Soldier. That's number 10. I'm actually not a fan of Civil War, believe it or not. Like, of all the... Civil War is my 15th. Civil War is oh, yeah? my 18th. Nice. So we all agree. Like, I guess the airport scene is probably the best part about that movie. And That's where it should have ended. Exactly. Should have ended we had to have the opening credits. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Okay, so what this what this app does is it lists two movies together, and you pick the one you think is the better one. Hmm. So the first two pairing is The Avengers and Iron Man 3. Uh, Avengers. Avengers. All right. The next two are probably the two of the worst movies in the series, but Iron Man 2 and Thor The Dark World. Ooh, Thor 2 is better than Iron Man 2, I would say. <sighs> I w- I I'm just going because of the comedy. That. I would say Iron Man 2, but we can go with Thor. You want to go with Thor? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Doctor Strange or Thor? Doctor Strange. Mm, agree. Okay. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming or Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? Guardians of the Galaxy. So, you want to do that one, Rob? Yeah. Well, that's his number one movie. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Uh, the Incredible Hulk or Ant-Man? Ant-Man. Ant-Man. All right. Captain America, The First Avenger or Age of Ultron? First, First Avenger. Avenger. Right. That's about what I'm going with, too. Uh, Iron Man or Civil War? Iron Man. Iron Man. Right. Infinity War or The Winter Soldier? Infinity War. Infinity War. Right. Finite War. <laughs> Finite War. You know what's funny? Actually, before we can continue, you know what's funny about Infinity War? I've heard more flack for that movie in the last like month and a half now than any Marvel movie I've ever seen. Everybody's so pissed about what happens at the end of that movie. <laughs> Like, it, like they don't they don't understand the logic of those characters are going to come back eventually. It could not have ended any other way. And I said that the first day they said that they're going to do this. I would say, what do they keep on saying? The majority of that roster is going to die. Yeah, he pretty Adam pretty much called it. Uh, the only difference is that, and Thanos instead of sitting on his throne was sitting in some kind of cave dwelling thing. Yeah. Exactly. And, um, I mean, even, even Dr. Strange is like, it has to happen this way. I'm like, what? I don't know what the fuck you want, but so the next two are guardians of the galaxy or Thor Ragnarok. Uh, first guardians or second guardian, first guardians. First, first. Yeah. I would go Thor Ragnarok. Hmm. If we tie, uh, Nick, you, you do the tie. Yeah. I I have one in mind. So I'm going to go guardians guardians. Um, I would go with Guardians as well. I like Thor Ragnarok, but I think Guardians is the more... I guess Thor's original... But, uh, I, 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 I lost Guardians... this argument just because I didn't pick up enough flyers. I see how it is. <laughs> so we'll go Guardians. Okay, Iron Man 3 or Black Panther? Black Panther. Black Panther. All right. Oh, it came up. Black Panther or the Avengers? Ooh. Mm. I'm always going to go with the Avengers on this one. I'm going to go well. Avengers. Avengers. All right. Barely. Barely. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Thor, or Iron Man two. Thor, uh, original Thor, yeah, Thor. Yeah, yeah, Thor. Right. Uh, the Dark World or Thor? Thor. The sequel Thor. or the original? Uh, Incredible Hulk or Spider Man Homecoming? Homecoming. Spider Man. Yeah, I think we all agree on that one. Uh, Homecoming or Ant Man? Homecoming. 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 Civil War or Age of Ultron? Can we so, just toss both of them in the gutter? Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I would say Civil War barely. Just because of Spider-Man. Yeah, I'd say Civil War. Yeah, I think just because of the airport fight, it makes up for what crap that goes on in Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron is <laughs> my number 20, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I hate There's Age of There's not this much talking in a fight. <laughs> uh, first Avenger or Civil War? Ooh, first Avenger. Uh, yeah, First Avenger. Uh, Iron Man or First Avenger? Iron Man. Iron Man. Ragnarok or Winter Soldier? Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Uh, Infinity War or Ragnarok? Infinity War. Infinity War. Right. Guardians or Infinity War? Guardians 1, I'm sorry. 1? Infinity War. You said 1? Uh, yeah, Guardians 1. I have Guardians ranked higher, so I'm going to go ahead and go with Guardians. 
it's a hard one because I like both of them. Yeah, I have to go with Guardians. Guardians is such a good movie. It is, but that's a, that's a, they always go for the head. All right, what, what do you think is funnier, Drax and Guardians or Drax and Infinity War? Infinity War, he's the Invisible Man. Drax is probably funnier in Infinity War. Yeah, I'm going to have to go Infinity War, it's true. Uh, Iron Man 2 or Iron Man 3? <laughs> 2. W- which one is the least offensive? Iron Man 3? I don't know, they're both absolutely horrible. I would say Iron Man 3 barely. I would mm-hmm. go with 2 because 3 pissed me off so much because I yeah. was Mandarin. the trailers got me so excited for Ben Kingsley. Yeah. yeah. And you know they what? pulled yep. the rug out from under me. I was like, "Yep, screw this movie." Yeah, let's go with 2. I mean, as All much right. as I hate what they did with Whiplash, uh was my board. <laughs> was my board. All right. Black Panther or Iron Man 2? Black Panther. Black Panther. Uh The Dark World or Black Panther? Black Panther. <laughs> Black Panther or Thor? Uh, Black Panther. Black Panther. Uh, Doctor Strange or Panther? Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Uh, the Avengers are Strange. Strange. Mm, strange. Uh, Age of Ultron or Incredible Hulk? I'm leaning Hulk because I really do not like Age of Ultron Incredible at all. Incredible Hulk. Yeah, I'm going to go with Incredible Hulk. I didn't mind that movie. Yeah, I mean now, like I hated it when I first saw it, but like compared to now, it's inoffensive. Inoffensive. So my problem with that movie is it set up so much for more Incredible Hulk movies, mm-hmm. and then they did nothing with it. That uh, thanks Universal, and they got rid of Betsy Ross, which is even worse. Uh, Incredible Hulk or Civil War? <sighs> Civil War. Mm, I'm gonna say Incredible Hulk. Yeah, I mean, I think Incredible Hulk. Oh. They're Incredible close. Hulk does that? Yeah, Incredible Hulk does have uh, Tim Roth in it, though. Uh, I think I was go, probably I'll go more and, entertained. But what Incredible Hulk? Yeah, yeah, let's go Incredible Hulk. Uh, First Avenger or Incredible Hulk? First Avenger. First Avenger. Ant Man or First Avenger? Ant Man. Iron Man or Ant Man? Iron Man. Iron Man. Homecoming or Iron Man? Iron Man. Oh, ooh. Yeah, I'm going to say Iron Man. Well, right. no, I'm going to say Homecoming. Should have gone with your gut. Uh, Iron Man or Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? Volume 2. Volume 2. Uh, Iron Man 3 or Winter Soldier? Winter Soldier. Mm, yeah. Uh, Winter Soldier or Iron Man 2? Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Uh, Thor the Dark World or Winter Soldier? Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. I thought Dark World would have been knocked out by now. Well, it, it still like has to, there's a whole bunch of like stupid calculations, but uh, uh, Winter Soldier or Thor? Thor. Uh, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. I was gonna have to I had to yell at you there for a second. No, I'm just uh, Black Panther or Winter Soldier? Black Panther. Mm, Winter Soldier. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go. Sorry, I had to go Winter Soldier on that one. Uh, Winter Soldier or the Avengers? Avengers. Avengers. Uh, Avengers or Ragnarok? Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Ragnarok or Doctor Strange? Ragnarok. Doctor Strange. Mm, I'm going with Ragnarok. Uh, Iron Man 3 or Age of Ultron? Ugh. <laughs> Iron Man Once again, 3. it's like the least offensive movie. I I have it barely Age of Ultron. I'm going to say Iron Man 3. Yeah, I, like, I actually like... Uh, but, but you get to see a married couple from Godzilla that oh kiss God. be a brother and sister. Oh God, that's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and spoiler alert, one dies. I'm debating which one I like more, James Spader or fucking uh, uh, G- uh, Guy Pierce. I'm, I'm going to have to go with Age of Ultron, sadly. Well, uh, Age of Ultron or All- Iron Man 2? I have Age of Ultron above Iron Man 2, barely. Like, Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3 are like oh, my two worst. I'd say Iron Man 2. Uh, God, fucking Iron Man 2 pisses me off. Age of Ultron. Uh, Thor the Dark World or Age of Ultron? I'm going to say Dark World. We're going to like the, the dregs. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to argue. I'm going to say Age of Ultron. Which one did you say, Rob? Dark World. Uh, this is like, can I just throw them all? <laughs> uh, uh, Age of Ultron. Uh, Age of Ultron or Thor? Thor. Thor. Thor or Civil War? Uh, Thor or Civil War? Thor. Yeah. Thor. Uh, Hulk or Thor? I like Thor more. Yeah, Thor. Uh, Thor or the first Avenger? First Avenger. 
first Avenger. Oh, wait. I'm, I'm sorry. Not the Avengers, the first Avenger? No, just the Captain America, the first oh. Avenger. Uh, I'll go Thor. I'll go uh, Captain America. I'll go Cap. Hmm. Which do I like? Which looks better, Thor or Captain America? You, you like Atwell <laughs> or do you like uh, Portman? I used to like Portman, but Atwell, I don't have to go Captain America because I like Atwell. She's hotter. Uh, Captain America: First Avenger or Black Panther? Black Panther. Um, Captain America. Who was the better? Who do you think the better villain was? Black Panther didn't have a villain. Or who? Who was the better anti-hero? Actually, I guess. Red Skull's not really a villain, anti-hero, is he? He's just, Red Skull's just a straight up just He's hit yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh man, but Tom, I'm gonna have to go with First Avenger because Tommy Lee Jones is awesome in that movie. Uh, Winter Soldier or First Avenger? Winter Soldier or First Avenger? Yeah, Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. Just because of that freaking elevator scene. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say Winter Soldier. Good choice. Uh, Ant Man or Winter Soldier? Uh, Ant Man. Winter Soldier. All right, Winter Soldier it is. Uh, Winter Soldier or Homecoming? Homecoming. All right. Homecoming or the Avengers? Uh, Avengers. Homecoming. I still think you don't think Killmonger was a good villain or a good uh, anti-hero. Who, me or Rob? Either of you. Michael B. I Jordan. Was, no, I thought he was great, but I uh, I don't know. That movie just kind of, I don't know. I thought Killmonger was the only good thing about that movie. Yeah, I like Homecoming, but I'm going to go with the Avengers just because of what it did. So, uh, Avengers or Iron Man? Ooh, Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man or Doctor Strange? Doctor Strange. Doctor? <laughs> Doctor Strange. Uh, I know where you're going with this, Adam, but Doctor Strange or Volume 2? Where, where do you think I'm going on this? I figured you were going to be Volume 2. Volume 2. Volume 2. Right. Volume 2 or Ragnarok? Volume 2. Volume 2. Uh, Volume 2 or the original Guardians of the Galaxy? Volume 2. Volume. Mm. Yeah, Volume 2. Alright, Volume 2 or Infinity War? Infinity War. Infinity War for both? Volume 2. Damn it, damn it, Rob. Uh, I'm going Infinity War. Alright, so, this is our ranking. Finally. Infinity War number 1. Of course. Okay, so it's Infinity War number 1, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 number 2, Guardians of the Galaxy number 3, Thor Ragnarok number 4, Number five, Doctor Strange. Number six, Iron Man. Number seven, The Avengers. Number eight, Spider-Man Homecoming. Number nine, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Number 10, Ant-Man. Number 11, Captain America, The First Avenger. Number 12, Black Panther. Number 13, Thor. Number 14, The Incredible Hulk. Number 15, Captain America, Civil War. Number 16, Avengers, Age of Ultron. Number 17, Thor, The Dark World. And 18 and 19 are Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3. And what about Ant-Man and the Wasp? We will talk about that after the review. Which, let's go ahead and do that now. Hiya, champ. How was school today? Ah, uh, ha, ha, ha. All right, get your jokes out now. Can you fix the suit? So cranky. You want a juice box and some string cheese? <laughs> do you really have that? So yeah, Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, made about $80 million this weekend, which is about double the amount that the original made. Um, still not the biggest hit because of what, you know, Avengers made over 200 uh, Black Panther made over 200 but a uh, solid hit nonetheless. So Ant-Man and the Wasp, what do you guys think? Eh. I, eh. Th- I thought it was an okay, good, I mean, it was a good movie, okay. Uh, I, I personally still like the first one more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I felt like they could have done a whole lot more with the movie. I, I, I don't get me wrong; there was great uh, comedy. The FBI agent—I uh, can't think of the guy's name. I mean, he, he's funny, but I just felt like that they—it was—it was just missing something. Right. I thought it was—I uh, thought it was funny. It was really funny, yeah. but um, it, pretty much everything was in the trailers. I don't think there was anything. <laughs> That was in the movie, except uh, I I was surprised by Michelle Pfeiffer. I didn't know, I didn't even know she was in it. Yeah, and I uh, I hadn't seen like any of the stuff from when he goes into the quantum realm. So mm-hmm. all that was kind of cool that sequence. But 
I mean, everything else, all the action, all the action uh, scenes and stuff, all that was in the trailers. So I was watching. I was like, I've already seen all this. So yeah, uh, I will say it's not a spoiler alert, but the second credit sequence. So not the very first credit, but the second one actually really upset me. And the more I thought about it, the more upset I got about it. There's actually in the trailer for the movie is the second credit scene. Yeah, I thought it was just. I thought they were trying to do like the swarma thing, where they were just trying to throw do a throwaway joke. But it's like this joke's not funny. I, I don't understand what the point of this is. Well, the first credit scene is extra. You need that because it's going to yeah. explain so much in the next movie, and also explain stuff about uh, another movie that already came out. Well, I was going to say we'll do what's this like overall initial thoughts, but then we'll get into like spoilers and stuff like that. But I thought um, it was okay, good. I mean, it was funny. The action was good, but like Rob said, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, you knew exactly what the movie was going into it because you pretty much saw it all already. Yeah, I mean, my overall initial opinion of the movie is kind of like in your guys' core. I thought the movie had some moments, but it's like, yeah, whatever. It's serviceable. It does what it needs to do, but it's just like characters come and go. Like, where do these characters come from? They're all of a sudden just there. Yeah. There's no like real logic to the movie at all. Which I mean, I know comic books. In general, don't always have like the greatest logic, but I'm like, come on, like, I don't know. I kind of felt like it was missing some of the um, the essence of Edgar Wright that you could feel was yeah. in the original one, and there was a couple of parts where you saw that they were trying to mimic that, and it just right. it it kind of felt forced at some times. Other times, I thought it was like really funny. Like my favorite um, comedic parts right at the end when the fbi says i'll see you later and it, mm-hmm. yeah and it goes yeah. into that whole back and forth i thought that was really funny but like just overall like adam said it felt like there was something kind of missing it felt more like a wasp movie yeah. than uh an ant-man movie because he didn't really do much yeah it's i think i the funny thing is i think um paul rudd's like a really good he's really good choice for the part like as Ant Man, and I think uh, Evangeline Lilly was really good as the Wasp, but I just it felt like a generic story. It just felt like this guy's under house arrest, and he happens to be a superhero, and there's stuff that has to deal with the fin- Infinity War, you know, or uh, Civil War, or whatever. And it just feels like the story just is is doing action set pieces and not much else. But unfortunately, it's kind of a movie where it's there's not much to talk about with it. I mean, other than, like, I, I thought Ghost was kind of a cool uh, mm. villain, but I felt like they went too quick to where they demystified her, you know? Yeah. And, uh, um, God. And, um, the whole, you, you see her, I guess there's spoilers, but you see her, like, in the, in her warehouse where all her tech is that helps keep her safe. Mm. Um, and for me, I was kind of like wondering, I was like, all right, how did she make all this herself? And then Lawrence Fishburne comes right in. And I don't know if they should have like drawn that out a little farther. Like you don't know how she is making all this tech or if she's really smart. Uh, but they just kind of said, ah, here's Lawrence Fishburne, you know? Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll get to like spoilers and stuff. I don't know. But yeah, it's like um, Lawrence Fishburne. I don't even know understand why. Like, I know he's based off he's plays Goliath and like he's that's his character in the comic book world, but he's just there to be like a a surrogate father for Ghost and you know I don't know it just it feels like his character is not needed in the movie that he's just there to be a, a homage to his character in the comics. Well, that's exactly what he is. You won't you won't see any development into his into his character at all. I don't think. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's more of a small Easter egg of being like, oh, look, it's Bill Foster. Okay, mm-hmm. he was, you know, uh, a giant man and a Goliath. So, mm-hmm. yay. Yeah. And then they bring in Walter Goggins, who's an amazing character actor, and he's like this stupid random villain that has no real urgency well, to the movie. Sonny Birch is pretty big in the com- Well, not pretty big in the comics, mm-hmm. But he has a bigger role in the comics. Uh, mm. I actually had to go look him up a little bit afterwards. I'm like, who's this guy? And uh, so originally, Iron Man, you know, you know, said that it was you know his bodyguard, right? If you, so after that, uh, that character actually gets the patents to all the suits originally. 
Okay. So then he tra- so kind of think of like what uh, Justin Hammer did in Iron Man Two. Mm-hmm. That's Sonny Birch. Oh, uh, okay. That what is okay? So let me ask you this: What is it with these these villains in suits? Like uh, the guy that Guy Pierce plays in Iron Man Three, and Justin Hammer, and this guy. I mean, like, uh, yeah, they're based off comic book characters, but they don't really have any. They don't really have like they're there as villains to like the bigger villain, which like. Ghost isn't even really a villain in the movie, is it? Is she? Mm, uh, well, do we want to go into the spoiler part here? Well, no, that's what that's what we're doing. We're, oh, we're okay. in spoilers. Sorry, I thought I said that. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So yeah, not really a villain at all. It's just, I mean, mm. in the com, I mean, I don't have problem with them changing characters from the comics as long as it makes mm. sense. I mean, the first ghost was a man, and this one is, uh, I think her name was, uh, if I remember correctly, Ava. So they changed it, which I had no problem with. Yeah, um, absolutely not. And but the problem is they completely just underuse use Ghost. Like, does mm-hmm. she still have her abilities? The phasing, um, what's going on with that? Is you mm-hmm. know because that's also from like the suits a lot of it. You know, and she's like, no, the suit does nothing for me, pretty much. And it's like, oh come on, you know. I mean, the suit gave her invisibility and stealth technology and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. So I mean, and you know, really the original character was just you know super intelligent, a hacker. Uh, and like a skills marksman, so I mean they could hit anything with a gun. Right. I think it, I think the problem with this movie, and it's similar. I guess it's not as bad as the original, but it feels like they need to give somebody a, a, um, a kind of arc that's what's the best way to put it uh, that you feel sorry for, like a villain you feel sorry for, because you know with Thanos, you know he's a terrible person or terrible alien or whatever you want to call him. They're trying to, you know, they're trying to create these villains that are more three-dimensional than your, you know, Malachi or fucking mm. Mandarin or whatever. They're trying to create a more real character, I guess, if that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah. But It's kind of like uh, Michael Keaton's character in Homecoming, which I think is probably the best villain in the MCU, at least in my opinion. Right. Um, but he's got like a, a kind of... A, He's got like a more relatable, believable backstory that mm-hmm. translates into him becoming this super villain. And uh, I feel like uh, Killmonger kind of had that. Um, mm-hmm. And I see that's kind of where they were going with it with her, but it just didn't feel like it worked out with Ghost. I, I don't. I, maybe they didn't go into it as much because I just didn't really care too much about her. It, maybe. Or maybe it's the point of, like, um, she didn't push Ant-Man and the Wasp too far. Like, I never felt mm-hmm. like they were ever really in any kind of really big danger. Well, they weren't. Yeah. And that's that was the problem. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I honestly think that the point of this movie was not even to have a movie. I think it was to introduce what the Quantum Realm is and how it's going to set up for uh, Avengers Endgame or whatever they're going to call it. Because there's not really, there's not really, honestly, the story is here is we need to save uh, Hank Pym's wife or, you know, Pym's wife. And we're going to do it by going into the quantum realm, which is where she's at. And then we're going to kind of have this side story about go- Ghost and about Silent Birch or whatever his name is. And they want it for their own game. But that's the base, the base of the story is that they want to rescue Pym's wife and they need ant-man to do it and he's under house arrest so there's not really a story here i honestly think they just made this movie to say hey we're introducing the wasp and Mm -hmm. uh this is why ant-man isn't in infinity war one and two because i honestly don't you're not going to see ant-man in the next infinity war i really don't think so i don't think he's going to be saved until after everything's resolved what ant-man yeah you want do you do you know much about the next avengers at all i know a little bit but i know what the next uh like title of like the ant-man or the wasp is called so Oh, there's actually a title for it already. It's something like, like from the quantum realm or something like that. Yeah, I thought. Oh, okay. I thought I read or something a while back that the next Ant Man was called Escape from Quantum World or something. But because huh, uh, there was rumor, there's like pictures of him in the Battle of New York or something like that. Well, there's um, there's they. If you remember, uh, I mean, yeah, he could be in the new Avengers movie, mm-hmm. but then how you know how how do they save him? You know, because there's right. really no one out there. No one knows where he is. There's three people who knows where he is. Right. And they're all gone. Exactly. So <laughs> that, that, he might be there at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, <laughs> is uh, 
Oh, and I'm forgetting completely forgetting his name right now. Is uh, Michael Pina gonna save him? Well, <laughs> that's, what, that depends, that's the other problem. Who knows who's gone in Ant Man's universe? He's probably he could be. Who knows if he's alive or not? You know. Yeah. I actually see Ooh. some uh, set photos from Avengers Four, and uh, mm. Ant Man's there with Captain America and uh, Robert Downey Jr. So how do they, I mean th- that you know? So then they have to address that in the next uh, Avengers movie because that's that's the next movie coming out. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, Captain Marvel is actually. Oh yes, correct. I'm sorry. Uh, well, um, the, w- the next one that actually is yeah, relevant Avengers. in the storyline. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I shouldn't say because I mean, Captain Marvel is huge in the storyline, but mm-hmm. she takes place in the '90s. Yeah. Um, I would say because they also before before he goes back into the quantum realm to collect whatever he's collecting for Ghost. Uh, he talks to the. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. Um, they talk about the time vortex. So do you think that's going to have anything to do with the next Avengers movie at all? Because I guess I should say, this this movie feels like a setup for the quantum realm that may possibly be used in Avengers, which I'm not saying it is because I don't know a lot about the comic book lore and stuff like that. I don't know if that's where they would go, but no. it just seems... No, not at all? No. Because it just seems kind of convenient that they talk a lot about what the quantum realm does, and how they, you know, how you know what they're going to do. But yet, it I don't know. I, I guess I, I guess maybe I felt like it would be, but like I said, you guys know more about it than I do. So yeah. So what do you guys think about like the de aging technology of uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's character and M- Michael M- Douglas? Well, we we actually talked about that after the movie. Uh, mm. I think. A Michelle fight for and uh, Pim was amazing. Lawrence Fishburne, I felt like they kind of cut his cut and paste like old Microsoft Paint, right. <laughs> like of an old movie of his, and just put mm-hmm. it on there. And I was just like looking at, it, I'm like, that just doesn't look, you know. It just felt. I mean, it, it looked good. I just didn't feel like it wasn't like as good as it should have been. Right. Uh, it was kind of like Leia in Star Wars. Uh, mm-hmm. It was kind of like just, something just didn't look right. Right. Yeah, I felt like they were trying to go for like platoon style uh, Lawrence Fishburne, and they kind of made like old style Fishburne, but like Matrix from Matrix, like Reloaded or something like that. Yeah. But um, what do you guys feel like? What do you guys think about like them when they went into the quantum realm and like how did you guys? What was your guys' opinion on that? I liked it. I think that was probably my favorite part of the movie when they actually mm. went to where the whole movie was trying to like lead up to go. Yeah. I kind of wish that they spent more time in there. I I really like the uh, what do you call those uh, water bears or something? That those a bunch of those little is that what they are? The little water bears were coming, uh, mm-hmm. trying to eat him. Yeah, I thought it was kind of funny. He's like, uh, uh, hurry up now, hurry. Yeah, up. it's just kind of so, interesting to see that it's a it's a different world that you know we haven't really dove into as mm-hmm. much in in Marvel. You know, we saw we've seen Earth and we've seen space but uh we've only gotten small glimpses of the quantum realm so i kind of wish they would have uh been in there more yeah i was gonna say quantum realm almost seemed like a little bit like the speed force from like the tv show the flash because mm. he goes into and then he like starts tripping or whatever and he's, he's back in his house and there's all four characters that are like, asking him questions and stuff like that and then he sees what looks like a samurai ends up being you know the michelle pfeiffer character but do you guys think that with this movie and Doctor Strange, we're starting to see how the maybe the Marvel uh, cosmic universes are going to call it is going to play out. I don't know with the I mean with the deal with Fox, anything is uh, mm-hmm. possible. So uh, I think I think the uh, Adam Warlock movie in Guardians Three is actually mm-hmm. going to be. I think that's. I mean, after uh, Avengers is going to have a huge part of it, the next Avengers. Mm-hmm. But I honestly think the next Guardians is going to have like the biggest effect on here on out because I think after that is when if we do start seeing mutants or anything or silver surfer or somebody mm-hmm. i still think I, I would love to see silver surfer but i think that's when it's actually going to start coming around like where where could you see them going with like the co- I mean, cuz i i'm pretty sure captain marvel is really going to introduce like some of the big ideas behind the cosmic realm cuz there's rumors that she's going to like travel through space and stuff like that if, if i read right i don't know if that's true or not uh well Captain Marvel, uh, well, yeah, we're in the spoiler part. Um, so the Scroll War and the Scroll, the Scroll of Secret Invasion, I'm really hoping they do. And I'm really hoping that you find out that one of the Avengers is actually a Scroll uh, mm-hmm. in disguise this entire time. Like, who would you think maybe would be a Scroll if I, you had to predict? I would say Iron Man. 
you know, because right. uh, that's how you can get, you know, you can say you can, you know, bow out of the Marvel Universe mm-hmm. uh, in this. And that would actually be a great in credit scene where he survives. But then you find out he's a scroll at the very end. Is that uh, is that something that's happened in the comics? Uh, I trying to rem- I think Captain America actually was a scroll. I'm trying to remember exactly who was the scroll in mm-hmm. Secret Invasion. I, I'm drawing a blank right now. But, yeah, I mean. Essentially, they just take you. They take your form. They can have all your abilities and everything. And Super Scroll actually has all the abilities of all the Fantastic Four characters put together. Oh, um, okay. So if you think of uh, the, the Rise of the Silver Surfer, mm-hmm. and how uh, Johnny Storm has all four abilities at the end of that movie, that's Super yes. Scroll. He can do all that. Oh, okay. So I would really love to see them go into that because uh, we already they've already talked about the Kree, like I said before, and mm-hmm. you know then we have. It's just, you know, you're building on that cosmic universe. Right. Um, Lee Pace is supposed to be in Captain Marvel, correct? The, when he, he's the bad guy from um, Guardians 1. He was... Uh, uh, Ronan. Oh, Ronan. Yeah, yes. he's supposed to be in Captain Marvel, right? Yes. I can definitely say uh, I am 99.9% there is going to be something mentioned about the scroll in this okay. movie. Uh, uh-huh. Just because you can't have Captain Marvel without the scroll. So I, it's, you know, you, you never know, but that's why I'm not 100. percent I'm 99.9 percent. Something about the scroll will happen in this movie, right? Because um, there was also, it's it's interesting because there was rumors that something with Captain Marvel was going to pop up in Ant Man. That I was talking to my friend Danny, which you guys know, he said something about he heard rumors that there's something to do with Invasion of the Body Snatchers or something like that. That is so the there, scroll secret invasion. Is it? Yeah. Was there anything like that in Ant Man, or did I miss anything? Because he said he had her rumors that was in Ant Man like, as a, like an Easter egg, but there I don't remember seeing anything. I would have to watch it again. I didn't pick up on it. Not saying it's not there, but I personally mm-hmm. did not pick up on that. I do know. I mean, you could pick up that you know they mimicked the ant to uh, read as uh, Scott's DNA signature. Okay. So I mean, you could say something along those lines, mm-hmm. but. I did, other than that, I didn't pick up on anything else. Not saying there wasn't, but I didn't. I personally, at the first go around, didn't see anything else. I actually, I thought really funny, like the when they um, his ankle ankle bracelet or whatever, the thing that notifies the police if he escapes. Yeah. They put it on the ant, then they wire the ant, the large ant, to act like him. And I think that's what you were talking about, Rob, where you thought the stuff was really funny in the movie with the ant when he was like in the shower or in the bath and like he was eating the wood and the plants and the yeah. <laughs> and then uh, what's and Louise comes in. That was yeah. pretty funny. Yeah, he's eating the uh, like the Captain Crunch, and he's like very uh, protective of it. I thought it's funny how Louise at, at first thought that that was mm-hmm. um, Scott. Scott. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Um, but yeah, like I thought that was good. I thought you know I don't know what you guys think about Evangeline Lilly as the Wasp, but I thought she was actually really good in the movie. Oh, I, I like her. her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she, she's very, like, for instance, when uh, Ant-Man's suit beca- starts, like, malfunctioning in the school and he turns into, like, Mini-Me or whatever. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> and the quips that uh, that the Wasp was saying as he uh, he's like, come on, reach it. Come on, you can reach it. You can do it. <laughs> it's like... It was... Uh, like some... The whole... I think the movie was really funny. It just... If, it kind of felt like it was supposed to be more of a comedy than, like, an action superhero. Like, they had to... They had to have some sort of a action story just because it's a yeah. comic film but it felt like it's really supposed to be a comedy movie and at least to me yeah i thought maybe they were trying to do like more lighthearted after the um after avengers infinity war how dark that movie was yeah. so they were trying to give a lightness and tone but um so yeah so you know the movie's okay it's given some ideas of where the future is heading for uh the movie or for the marvel universe and stuff like that um, you get to the end. He's going, and they go in. They send um, Ant Man into the quantum realm, and then he's trying to get out, and then everybody dies. I'm like, man, like how many of these Avengers are end up going to end up being in the next movie? Because you don't have Wasp anymore. You don't have Hank Pym. You don't have uh, uh, Van Dyke. What's her name? I can never remember what Michelle Pfeiffer's character's name is. Why do they all have different last names? Aren't they like so? So married? the mother never took Hank Pym's last name when they got married. Oh. So the daughter hates the father, so she took her mother's last name. Uh, okay. okay, yeah, I never. That makes sense. So but, uh, yeah, that's why it's Janet Van Dyke uh, Dyne and uh, Hope Van Dyne. Uh, okay, 
But here's the question I have for you guys. Do you think the Michelle Pfeiffer and uh, Michael Douglas characters will come back? Or I'm pretty sure you'll see the Wasp again, but this is like the first time in the series where you're not really sure if these three characters, outside maybe the Wasp, will actually come back or not. Because we actually, in the Ant-Man series, you don't even know who else is gone. So I would say yes. I, I think you're going to see them back uh, because you want to get Michelle Pfeiffer for a small role like that. I think it's going to yeah. be more... Uh, uh, it's kind of like how I said in, uh, oh my gosh, uh, Justice League. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't get these two big actors to play Bruce Wee Wayne's parents unless you have something set up in the future. And then they announced Flashpoint where, you know, you have you know, the mom play Joker and the dad play Bruce Wayne, which is, you know, amazing. But that's mm -hmm. another podcast. Um, <laughs> I do think we'll see them again, but not as much, you know, more like going in the background or like extreme supporting role right right what about you rob um i think they set up her having powers so i think mm -hmm. they'll probably want to explore that more in future movies so i i kind of i kind of feel like she'll probably be back right see i felt like she used her powers to heal ghost that's why they're, that's why i felt like they had to go in to collect that stuff to now they may they not they may not be pulling that up for ghost, but mm. they said they said they were going in and they needed to get those quantum particles or whatever for to stabilize her because I guess she's oh. not completely healed yet. Ghost isn't completely healed, which which probably lends to that she still has her powers. Well, here's the thing. I don't know. Okay, so this is probably not true. It's something somebody sent to me. It's a. Uh... IGN, somebody in the comments of IGN, because they were talking about like the big, what the WTF moments in Ant Man the Wasp. But somebody said something about how it could be possible that the ghost they're talking about is not actually ghost, and they're actually talking about Doctor Strange, that maybe he projected himself as he was going through those 14 million scenarios that he was able to project. And has, that's, why, that's why I keep thinking the quantum realm has something to do with helping bring back the Avengers, maybe. Like the, the quantum stuff they're uh, collecting. Like I said, it's probably not true, but it's an interesting theory that kind of makes you wonder if maybe they're going to use the quantum realm, chem like the whatever he's collecting, to maybe bring back people. Yeah, I don't the, know. That I, doesn't make any sense. But Actually, that was, I think I told Rob, I think I told you that. That might have been the mm -hmm. first thing where they use that to heal people to bring them back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I was thinking about that more, and, you know, he's removing them from existence. Right, right. So I don't know how you would heal someone back from that. I mean, I, I well, yeah, I have a really good guess on how they're going to bring people back. I'm not going to throw it out there, mm -hmm. uh, but you, you know, it's in my mind, it's pretty obvious of how they're well, not obvious, but I have like two mm -hmm. theories of how they're going to bring everyone back, but it has mm -hmm. nothing to do with the healing particles. Yeah, no, like I said, it's probably not a plausible theory, but that was an interesting theory. Um, one more thing before we wrap up, um, do you think? Do you think Hank or uh, Scott Lang going into the quantum realm saved him from being uh, obliterated, or do you think it was, wouldn't have mattered? I don't know. That, I think it wouldn't have. Go ahead. That that was my question. Is I'm wondering if he's so small that he because physics is different down there. So I'm wondering if the Infinity Gauntlet can reach into the quantum realm. And I personally think he would have he would have uh, survived anyways. Yeah, I mean that that's my theory too. But I just that was the question I wanted. To curious about what you guys thought about it so now my real question is now ghost did ghost mm -hmm. survive because she's phasing oh that's interesting i never even thought about that we're gonna have to wait till uh, avengers endgame to see about that one but although i would love love not to have uh, brie larson in avengers uh, 4 where they you know they get the page and she looks at the pager and then she just disappears that would be hilarious actually i would I mean, laugh hysterically <laughs> You know, you know what would be the biggest what the like fuck you moment to the audience, and they like repeat everything that happened, but they show you more Avengers that have died. <laughs> and Thanos just so. wins again. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, as uh, I, I I told Robert, where are all the bad guys in this? You know, so are we going to see some of the major villains coming out? Like, I mean, yeah, some of them had to die. I mean, it's not <laughs> if all of them survived, that'd be fucked up. But um, I don't know. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. well we'll see malachi he's the only one survived he actually died in thor the dark world uh, so anyway so i like 
end initial thoughts. So you both, like we all three of us pretty much thought it was okay. Um, had moments, but it wasn't, you know, spectacular. So, and you do not have to stay for the second credit scene. Yeah. That, oh yeah. We didn't even mention that. That's the oh. one where the ants like drumming and shit. Yep. It's yep. the ant playing the drums. But you see the, you see the, um, the public broadcasting thing or whatever, you know, it's going beep, but you just see the ant drumming. It's like, what the yeah. fuck? But okay. So, if we rank this according to what our results were, uh, where would you guys put this on the list? Uh, for since it's the twentieth film, uh, would you guys put this? Let's do a starting. Would you put this above Ant Man? No. You, no, it's not as high as Ant Man. Okay. Would you put it above Incredible Hulk? No. You wouldn't put it above. What about you, Adam? Uh, I, I would say it's, it's Incredible Hulk's in the mid teens for me, and I have this mm. movie in the mid teens. I have. Honestly, I have it just behind Incredible Hulk. Okay. Um, would you put it above Civil War? Yes. Yes. Okay. So below Incredible Hulk and above Civil War. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to read this list off again one more time. Uh, Infinity War number one, Guardians Volume 2 number two, Guardians 1 number three, Thor Ragnarok number four, number five, Doctor Strange, number six, Iron Man, number seven, The Avengers, Spider-Man Homecoming number eight. Captain America, The Winter Soldier, number 9. Number 10, Ant-Man. Number 11, Captain America, The First Avenger. Number 12, Black Panther. Number 13, Thor. Number 14, Incredible Hulk. Number 15, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Number 16, Civil War. Number 17, Avengers Age of Ultron. Number 18, Thor The Dark World. Number 19, Iron Man 2. And number 20, Iron Man 3. So, there's our... Combined list, um, like I said, you know, if you guys, I'll put it in the uh, notes, show notes or whatever on the page where you can do this yourself, but that's kind of the overall opinion on that. So, all right, so that's good. Um, that'll do it with uh, Ant Man the Wasp review. Um, before we end, do you guys have any recommendations on anything that you want to recommend to the audience to watch, movie wise or TV shows? I do actually have two for this month uh, Ready Player One and Super Troopers 2 come out on Blu ray and digital uh, okay. this much. Yeah, this month. Uh, Ready Player One is already out on digital. Uh, it comes mm-hmm. out Blu-ray on the end of the month. And Super Troopers comes out mid-month. Two movies I would definitely recommend if you have not seen. Uh, to either get them digitally or just pick them up and watch them. Uh, they are great movies. Awesome. What about you, Rob? Um, I would recommend uh, Glow Season 2 is on Netflix, if nobody's seen Glow, which is Gorgeous oh, yeah. Ladies oh, yes. of Wrestling. Uh, season 2 just came out. It's a pretty funny uh, series. It's also, each episode's only like half an hour, so it's a pretty quick mm-hmm. like binge watch. Uh, also, there's a uh, Netflix kind of documentary series called The Staircase, which is okay. about, uh, it's kind of a murder, true life story about... Uh, the people who under the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's his name? Uh, I think it was the Michael Gip. Peterson or something a few years back. Um, okay. Was on trial for like allegedly murdering his wife. And that's what this is about. And it's pretty good. I like those, like, murder drama things. It's not a drama. Well, murder documentary thing. Well, that's cool. Did you see the um, Making a Murder one? Yeah, that was good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got a couple. One is Won't You Be My Neighbor, which if you guys want to watch a documentary about a guy that actually tried to change the world for the better, um, definitely watch this movie. A lot of people have, but if you haven't, about Mr. Rogers. Um, it's a show that was on PBS that dealt with all types of topics, everything from racism to uh, suicide to American economy, all that kind of stuff. And it, it was, I'm sure both of you guys have watched it. The show was pretty influential in what it tried to tell the people. But this is a story about uh, how Fred Rogers started Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and how much he had to go through to keep the series on air and how it affected everyone. But you get a chance to go see that um the other one is i'm gonna kind of like retro it but um if you guys haven't seen it go see uh one crazy summer mm, yeah um but yeah if you guys haven't seen one crazy summer check that out it has john cusack and demi moore bobcat this... goldthwait yeah bobcat <laughs> goldthwait um it's funny it's very offbeat it's from the guy who directed better off dead it, it's really funny it's you know I, I i'll let you guys watch it but if you guys get a chance check that out so all right, so with that, um, we'll go ahead and end the show. Uh, Rob, if they want to reach you, want to give you money or awards, where can they find you? 
Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Robert Dodrill. Uh, well, I guess it's not at, but just search Robert Dodrill. Uh, or you could get on Instagram at Cell Reborn. Okay. And uh, Adam, if they want to reach you or send you apparently ticking bombs or whatever, where can they reach you? <laughs> that was me tapping my leg against my chair. I didn't know my <laughs> mic was picking everything up. <laughs> That's all good. Uh, you can text me directly at 272-727. <laughs> I'm gonna text that see what happens. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> FYI, that is AMC's uh, <laughs> two seven two seven two seven seven two seven. Kiss my. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Is that what he did? We spotted hello. No, I just said hello. I checked it oh. out. <laughs> You are here by band from AMC Dolby Digital. No. Oh, Jesus. Man. Did they have anywhere they could reach you, or these wanted to follow Rob as usual? Uh, 8283 uh, Productions on YouTube uh, and on Facebook. Awesome. And um, as always, you can reach me at Big Shadow 1138 um, We have a Twitter account now called it's at, it's Movie Emporium, but it's at Emporium Movie because some jackass actually took a movie Emporium but doesn't use it. So go F yourself. No, I'm kidding. Um, you also rate, subscribe, let us know how we're doing. Uh, send emails right now to annlapola1138 at gmail.com. Um, like I said, we're on all these different platforms. So wherever you listen to, please uh, help us get more listeners. But otherwise, we're going to head out. And that's a wrap. Bye. See you.